Hello YouTube, this is Marauders here and today I want to talk about Windows tablets. So this here is a Microsoft Surface Go, the Go 1, not the Go 2 that just launched recently. And, um, and Windows tablets in general, okay? A lot of people actually make these, not just Microsoft themselves. Uh, and the funny thing when I hear people talk about all these Windows tablets, it's like... Whenever there's one that is being sold as just a tablet, that means just like the Surface where you it doesn't come with a keyboard, everyone says like, why, why do people bother separating the keyboard, okay? It's Windows, right? How come, why, why are you separating the keyboard? Why is Microsoft just balanced selling a piece of hardware without an essential component because people they say that without a keyboard windows without a hardware keyboard and touchpad windows you can't use windows properly and uh that's a pretty that's a pretty big misconception because uh i don't have the touch keyboard for for this surface go and uh I've been using, I have had quite a few Windows tablets that don't have, uh, that I never bought the keyboard for them. Uh, because in general, the, my opinion is that as long as you're not using something that that's full screen, for example, look, if you're going to play LOL on this thing, League of Legends or, or Dota 2 or something, Obviously, you're gonna need a keyboard, okay? That that's that that there's no escaping for that. But if you're just gonna use this for browsing and heck, even some light light uh, office work or something, you can make do just with the tablet without any physical hardware, without the keyboard, and without without a mouse, without the pen. Yeah, that's what what people will say. Okay, the um, so. Here are some tips of what I do to use a Windows tablet without any physical hardware. Okay, so enjoy. Okay, so when you first start your Surface or any Windows tablet that doesn't come with a keyboard, you might see yourself greeted with this screen. So this is basically what Windows calls the tablet mode. It is supposed to be an environment that makes it makes people coming from uh, Android tablets or I don't know well there's a back button so it's mainly Android tablets to feel more welcoming to, to, to when they come to use Windows without a keyboard so here's my recommendation about Windows tablet mode you slide your finger from the right side of the screen so this would give you your notifications bar like usual and uh, see on the upper left hand corner here, there's this button called tablet mode. So this enables or disable tab ta tablet mode. So what you do is you press the button. This will turn off tablet mode and you never come back to it again. Because for one very simple reason, this is Windows. This is not an Android tablet or even an iOS iPad or whatever. The main thing here is that unless you happen to use only exclusively apps, modern Windows apps that were made for that, that modern interface, tablet mode is going to cause you a lot of problems and it's going to be very unfamiliar to you if you're a Windows user and you come to it. And so I've been using Windows tablets for so long, I have, the first thing I do with tablet mode is I turn it off because it's really, it just gets in the way, okay? We are using Windows here, we are not using any like simplified OS and that should be the case. You shouldn't need to feel like you, if you, if you try and run normal Windows applications in tablet mode, you're going to feel very strange and unfamiliar. So yeah. My recommendation is always to turn off tablet mode. It, it's really more of a hindrance than anything. So after that, the other thing to know is that 
so I showed you they can swipe from the right to get your to get notifications. You can also swipe from the left to see all the things on your desktop. Okay, so those are just some simple uh, gestures, and of course, tapping on the lower right hand corner also brings up the show desktop. And here's a good time to tell you all about the usual tap gestures. Obviously, you do a simple tap is to do a selection. Okay, now to do a right click, you just hold and it comes out. Just hold your finger on the screen, a square comes out and you let go. So then it's a right click. Okay. Okay, so sometimes, especially in web pages, you notice that while generally you can interact with it normally, what you will find out is that you are unable to do right clicks. For example, if I try to right click on the video here, nothing happens when we try to right click. It's actually just like a left click. So what happens is because the web page itself might have trapped the click on mouse down and therefore it won't give Windows the ability to process the gesture for a tap and hold gesture. And of course, sometimes things might be too small and you might want something more precise than your fingertip to touch the screen. So in cases like that, what you do is you can just hold on the taskbar, do a right click on the taskbar basically. And then you see this link command here called show touchpad button. So we click on that. And once we have that, notice that a new icon will now appear on our taskbar. And it looks familiar. Let's tap on that. And what do we see? It's basically a touchpad. And now we have a way to easy, precisely control our cursor when we need for those situations which touch just doesn't work properly. And now I can just right click like normal and I can also left click like normal. There is no difference. It just works. And of course, the interesting thing here is that what you have here is basically what we call a position touchpad. So gestures work on it. I can do zoom. I can do the three finger gestures. And so on. So this is, this is something that that, I don't know, this is something that will really help you when you're using a Windows tablet without any extra hardware devices because this basically solves a lot of interaction problems that people were having. Okay, let's, now that we talked about the gestures and the mouse, let's talk about the keyboard. Now, first thing is that for those of you who don't know, other than just typing on the keyboard normally, you can also use swipe typing. If you want to. Okay. And the other thing is that, remember, you have access to a few keyboards. You can even have a more compact one, so it's even easier, easier to swipe. Windows without a hardware keyboard. And I didn't start on the letter, so that's why it doesn't swipe. Okay. Now, the other thing is, when you look at the keyboard, you notice that, hey, this is missing some, this keyboard would be great on a normal, let's say on Android or something, but if you're going to use this in Windows, it's missing a lot of very important keys, like the Windows key, the function key, and stuff like that. And basically, this keyboard just works different. I would have to, it's something like it's not really uh, actually, it doesn't fully emulate a physical keyboard. So what you do is, you again, go to the select keyboards. You notice this more compact looking keyboard. Now you click that. And here, now you have a more fully featured keyboard. So you have your caps lock, you have your tab, you have your shift. It looks more like a normal keyboard. 
And if you need your function keys, you can even press that and you get access to your function keys. So with this, you now have a fully capable uh, hardware, hardware keyboard. And that's important to know when you're using certain app applications, you might need to hold down shift. For example, I can right now, in order to do a selection on the text, I need to drag like that or my, I need to drag with the mouse, which might not be the most accurate thing. But if I use the system keyboard, I can just hold shift. I can do control X, control V. And everything basically works as if I'm using a normal keyboard. So this, knowing this will really help you in using Windows without an actual hardware keyboard. Now, the other thing that, that you notice is that by default, notice how the keyboard is snapping in and out, okay? Sometimes when you, most of the time, the most of the time, when the keyboard comes up, the application is able to move to move itself to so that you can see where you're entering the text and the keyboard as well. This is basically again just something that is like when you're using a, ta a Android tablet or an iOS device, but again. When you're using legacy, like normal Win Windows applications, sometimes the app will not be able to get out of the way and you find that the keyboard is blocking you. At those times, the good thing to remember is that you can actually just undock the keyboard and you can then move the keyboard around. See, you can just move the keyboard wherever you want. In fact, for the most part, I always use the keyboard undocked so that I can easily move it around whenever, whenever I need to. The other, the other thing about the keyboard is that notice how when you, when you get focused on the text box, the keyboard pops up. Okay. Now, you might find that to be a bit annoying in when you're using Windows. So what you can do is, you can just go to settings, and then there'll be this option here called show the touch keyboard when not in tablet mode and there's no keyboard attached. So you can just turn that off. So once you turn that off, the keyboard will no longer automatically come up, which again, it might be a good thing for you. And when you do need the keyboard, all you have to do is just press the keyboard icon on the, on the taskbar itself. If the keyboard icon is not there, remember you can just hold the, hold the task, or do a right click on the taskbar. And remember that there are these two options here, show touch keyboard and show touchpad. Okay, always good to remember those things. Okay, so let me just emphasize again that what the, all the virtual touchpads and virtual keyboards, these are basically just real extensions, real emulations of physical hardware. So here I'm doing Explore, I'm in Explorer right now. And in Windows tab, in the Windows tablet, the, one of the options that's enabled by default is that this item checkboxes option, which allows checkboxes to be shown on the side of items so we can try and select multiple items easier. But of course, if you're used to using a mouse and keep mouse, what you can do is I can just hold down the left click and I can just draw the square and I can select the items. So that works like normal, okay? But of course, if we use a mouse and keyboard together, I can again hold down control on my keyboard and I can just select multiple files like that. And of course, after holding down control, I can hold down shift. And then I can select. So you can see that with this, with the system keyboard and the virtual touchpad, you essentially 
do have at your disposal a keyboard and a mouse even though you don't have a hardware keyboard and mouse so what I want to say is that yes it is perfectly perfectly possible for you to use a Windows tablet for you to especially like for you to get a Microsoft Surface Go or Surface Pro and not buy the touch keyboard to go with it okay the 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 tablet itself is perfectly usable and as I said in the beginning as long as you're not using any full screen applications like you're not using any you're not playing games or anything on it that would that would stop you from accessing all these touch overlays you're fine you don't have to buy a touch keyboard to go along with your windows tablet 